Blood clots help us heal when we hurt ourselves. But if a clot forms inside the blood vessels, it can put us at risk of a stroke, heart attack, deep vein thrombosis in our leg, or a pulmonary embolism, when a bit of the clot breaks off and travels to the lungs. When we have an increased risk of a blood clot, we're likely to be offered anticoagulation treatment to help prevent blood clots forming. Anticoagulants can also stop existing blood clots from becoming larger. They work by interfering with the process of how clots are formed so that blood takes longer to clot. Sometimes, the risk of a blood clot increases when we have certain conditions, and there are different anticoagulant medicines available to help. Warfarin, and more recently direct oral anticoagulants, or DOACs, they can be used to prevent blood clots in AF, clotting disorders, after knee or hip replacement surgery, and to prevent and treat DVT and PE. They work in a different way to warfarin, and you do not need to have regular blood tests to monitor them. If you have a mechanical heart valve, warfarin is the only one that you can take, as the others are not licensed for this condition. Warfarin patients can also use a handheld device at home that uses a pinprick of blood to give a result known as an International Normalised Ratio, INR, that tells the clinic if the dosage needs changing. All of these anticoagulants are taken by mouth. Heparin's another type of anticoagulant, given by injection. It can be used if oral anticoagulants need to be stopped, for example because of surgery or pregnancy. It's also used for cancer patients having chemotherapy treatment who are at risk of or have actually developed a blood clot. So, with so many options, how do we know which anticoagulant is best for us? Well, we can discuss with our doctor the choices for us and our condition along with the benefits and risks of all the anticoagulants. Good morning, Doctor. Why do you want to see me today? Oh, good morning. Yes, I wanted to see you because we've noticed your pulse is no longer completely in sync. It's skipping around all over the place, something called atrial fibrillation. I just wondered if you had noticed that. Well, no, I haven't actually. Gosh, this has really come as a surprise. Uh, well, it's good that you're not bothered by it at the moment, and um, that's fine. But I'd be feeling you if I didn't mention that because it's skipping around all over the place, there's a small risk of a clot forming in the heart, and we don't want that shooting off and causing mischief like a stroke. So we need to have a discussion about thinning your blood down with uh, an anticoagulant. And I just wondered if you'd heard about anticoagulants or blood thinners before? Well, yes, I, I have heard about blood thinners, but... Can you not just do something to make my heart go back into tune again? Yeah, there are various options to try and do that, but uh, there's always a risk of your heart flipping back to the funny rhythm. So we do need to think about thinning your blood down long term just to prevent the clots forming there. So I need to discuss with you the range of options that are open to you now, and that includes drugs like warfarin. 10, 15 years ago, we thought that aspirin was adequate to prevent the clots forming in the heart, but we now know that's not the case. So for most people, um, it's anticoagulation that needs to be considered. Um, but the good news is that there's a whole range of options for that. So let me just briefly tell you about warfarin. It's been around for a long time. You do need to have regular blood checks just to make sure it's at absolutely the right level. And a lot of patients have to adjust the dose quite frequently. And, of course, that can be a pain if you're travelling abroad and you can't get blood checks done, um, or if you change other medication like antibiotics can affect it, or if you change your diet. So the newer drugs have the advantage that they're just as good at preventing clot forming, but they don't need a regular blood check, so much more convenient. Some of them are once a day, some of them twice a day, and there's a whole range of them, like Pixaban, Rivaroxaban, Dibigatran, Edoxaban. The names don't really matter, but it's just a whole range of options that we need to discuss with you to find the drug that's best for you. And the important thing is that you keep taking it in the right way and that we support you to make the right decision for you and thereafter. Oh, thanks, Doctor. Um, I have got a question. Um, are there, is there any side effects to these medicines? Yeah, I mean, all drugs have side effects, and that's why we have to weigh up the pros and cons of this. But definitely thinning your blood down is going to be of benefit f 
for you specifically. But the main side effect of these drugs is bleeding. And for warfarin, it's hugely important you have the regular checks to make sure you're taking absolutely the right dose for you at that time. For the newer agents, as I said, you don't have to have the regular blood checks for that, but it's very important that you take them regularly and you don't skip doses for that. And with that, you can reduce the risk of bleeding to, to a low level. And the good thing is that the newer agents, actually for serious bleeding that might really harm you, there's a lower risk than with warfarin. That's really reassuring. Do I have to make my decision today? No, it's great to have this discussion, but it's not something you need to decide here and now. Um, you can if you want, but it, think about it. We need to make a decision in the next few days to have a think about it. And then let's come back in the next few days and you can make a decision that you're comfortable with. Thank you. Thank you. So the treatment is decided jointly between patient and doctor. The important thing is to get the right treatment at the right time to suit each one of us as individuals. Remember, anticoagulants are effective and can reduce the risk of blood clots and stroke.